education uh, today. I'll tell you about education of the world. There are a lot of countries in the world, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Last semester, I went to study in the United States. Then I became familiar with American education. That's how I became interested in this topic. So first, I want to tell you about American education. As part of study abroad program, I went to an elementary school for a week. Then I was surprised by many things. For example, they have snack time during class. Students prepare tissues on their desks. Then the teacher gives students some snacks for by placing the snacks on the tissues like this. <laughs> and children were eating and studying. And I couldn't imagine that in Japan, but I think it is a good way to keep children concentration. Don't you think so? <laughs> also, the classroom was very colorful. There are class rules that they decided by themselves, many positive words, and so on. I think that praising students is one of important things in American education. It gives them confidence. Sometimes the teacher hugged her students. I thought it's one way to express love and make good relationships. Next, do you know which country has the highest scholastic ability? Scholastic ability means skill of study. The answer is Finland. In Finland, if people have a baby, the government sends them a baby essentials such as baby clothes, a baby motor, children, books, and so on. And also, they can get about 30,000 yen monthly until the child turns 17 years old. There are no school fees, and on top of that, students get uh, get free school lunch, textbooks, and school supplies. Can you believe it? <laughs> I was surprised too, but I think it's it's a very good system because mothers can give birth in in peace. Incidentally, Finland children reading time at home is the highest of the world. Reading books is very good for children because reading skills are used in most kinds of studies. Children can enrich their sensitivity and develop their power of imagination through reading books. Also in Sweden, there are summer vacation that is two and a half months along. And the students don't have homework. I'm so jealous. <laughs> and in France, from six years old to 16 years old, children can take compulsory education. Compulsory education means that children have to go to school. Also in public schools, there are no fees. One way term is birthday from January 1st to December 31st. Most of students don't go to clown school, but there are systems of skipping a grade and repeating the same grade, so they study hard. In Brazil, children can choose time of class, either morning or afternoon. In Switzerland, educational systems are different from each state. In short, there are many ways of education in the world. Now, I think that I want to be a teacher in the future, so it is important to know many ways, to, many ways of education for me. It helps to broaden my view. Of course, Japanese education has also good points, so I want to explore my educational ways. Thank you for listening.